I've got a recipe. I'm calling it twice baked potatoes au gratin. Let's get cooking with style. I don't want to assume that everyone knows how to make a baked potato. So what I've done is use these smaller ones. You scrub them down really good because we're going to eat the skins. You're going to take a fork and poke holes in them because if you don't, they could pop in the oven. And we're going to toss these with olive oil and salt and pepper. They go in the oven and they come out and they're like this. Now this potato has been in the oven for about an hour and 20 minutes. To stuff them, we're going to cut the top off like so. And I'm going to save this little piece like that. And I've already gone, and done, gone ahead and done most of my potatoes already. And I'm going to take a spoon and being very careful not to break the potato because we're going to rebake these, hence the term twice baked. I'm going to take most of that potato out and then I'm going to lightly mash these potatoes here. And then I'm going to add my ingredients into that. So just a quick little mash because we want them to kind of be lumpy and crunchy on the inside. And then to that, I'm going to add my ingredients. Now I'm gonna make this my way. I'm gonna use a little bit of sour cream. You can use whatever you'd like, but since these are all gratin potatoes, of course you need some cheese. We're gonna put the cheese in. I'm gonna use the white part of a green onion, and then I'm gonna use, of course, bacon, because it makes everything better. And we're just going to mix this up to a nice consistency here. And then we're going to restuff our baked potato. So give me a moment here to get this all mixed in. Then we'll start the stuffing process. Had to add a little more sour cream. Remember, you can always add more, but you can't take it out. All right, we've got a nice consistency here. Let's get everything in position so we can do this. And again, it's as simple as taking the potatoes out or putting them in. So. Start by just getting it partially filled because you want to make sure that you have enough potato to fill your empty potatoes. More than likely, you'll have some left and you know what happens with that. The cook gets to eat it. And we'll fill these up. And whatever's left over, you know, maybe serve it on the side or something like that. And we want this to be over the top, okay? So even though this one wasn't full enough, I can come back and add more. And I want the top to be a little coarse like that because that'll create the crustiness that we have that will make the crunchiness really good. So I'm almost there. And sometimes you can just like, you can get it all back in there. And you can see all the cheese there, like so. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of Parmesan cheese, because this will add a nice little golden brown to it. I'm gonna top that like that. And be generous with that Parmesan cheese, because it'll melt over the top. And so this is ready to go in the oven. I've got it preheated from when I was baking these. I'm gonna throw these in the oven. I've turned the broiler on to get these golden brown on top and in just a moment or two, they'll be done. All right, these turned out absolutely perfect, nice and golden brown on top. Now to make them ready for presentation on the table. And it's really quite simple. We're just gonna use a nice platter here and I'm gonna kinda stagger them back and forth so they look really nice. You know what I always say, it's gotta look good to taste good. And then at the very end, I'm gonna take some scallions. You could use chives, but I'm using scallions. And I also cut them on an angle, so they look really cool. So we'll just put those around. You know, they're not gonna stick on top, but it's just part of the presentation and look, and you'll, you'll be able to pick them up off the platter whenever you're ready. Okay, here you go. Twice baked potatoes au gratin. I'm telling you, perfect for a steak, almost by itself could be a whole meal with a salad. That's casual elegance here on Cooking with Styles got a great cream of potato leek recipe that I know you're gonna love. Let's get cooking with style. I've devised this way of making cream of potato soup without using one of those uh, hand blenders. So this step you won't have to do if you have one of those hand blenders. But what we're gonna do is just a little olive oil in the bottom of the pan with the garlic. And we're gonna lightly saute this for just about a minute or two. And we're also gonna throw in the bay leaves and the thyme at the same time. 
I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. So we'll saute this for just a couple minutes and then we'll assemble the rest of uh, the soup. It's been about two or three minutes and our garlic is lightly sauteed. I'm gonna throw in the potatoes. It's about four cups of russet potatoes. And then to that, I'm gonna add my celery with a little bit of water and then chicken broth. Now this isn't all the chicken broth that we're going to use. We're gonna put just enough in to cover the potatoes and celery. We're gonna bring that to a boil and then turn it down to simmer. So our potatoes have come to a nice boil. What I'm gonna do here is turn this down to a medium low heat so it simmers, put a lid on it and let it cook till the potatoes are tender. Been simmering now for about 20 minutes. Look at that, really nice and tender potatoes. Make sure that you take the bay leaves out because no one likes eating those. Now here's where we go with the poor man's cream of potato soup with leeks. Uh, we're gonna use a masher instead of one of those uh, fancy blenders. And if you don't get it all the way creamy, well then you can just call it rustic cream of potato and leek soup. So I'm gonna be mashing here for a couple minutes and once we get it ready, I'll show you how to finish it off. After feverishly mashing those potatoes, that's pretty creamy in my book. So now in goes the leeks and we're gonna add the rest of our chicken broth and some cream and we're gonna bring this to a simmer again and let it cook for another half hour. Beautiful chicken broth and then the heavy cream in it goes and we will bring this to a boil again and let it simmer. Sue's been simmering about 45 minutes to an hour. It's thickened up nicely. Let's serve it up. Nothing like a hot bowl of soup on these cold, well, let's call them cool winter days. Um, if you like this soup a little bit tighter, you can do like a roux, butter, and flour. Cook it for a couple minutes and then mix it in. It'll tighten it up or reduce it down the way we did here. So I like to serve this up with a little bit of a garnish. And I've got the whole green thing going here, don't I? I'll put that in there like so. See, that's it's not really thick creamy, but it's nice and creamy. One more scoop, because I know I'll eat the whole thing. And I'm gonna set that down. And keeping with the onion family, I'm doing some tops of some scallions, some green onions. And put those in there just like that. This with a sandwich, or maybe some nice crusty bread, and you're looking at a great meal. Normally I would pick that up, but it would spill if I tilt it. That is how we do it on Cooking with Styles. There's nothing like the creaminess of baby red potatoes, but then you fry them and make them crispy and you're at a whole new level. Let's get cooking with style. The trick to making these red baby potatoes nice and tender and crispy is we're gonna boil them first. So we put them in a small stock pot so they're covered. Cold water, a couple tablespoons of salt, we put these on the stove, then we'll drain them off, and then we'll have them ready to do the smash part. Now, this is not that hard either, so what we're gonna do is I like to use a plastic bag that I use for pounding like chicken breasts or something like that. And you're just gonna take the potato, put it in the center like that, and you're gonna take a frying pan and smash it, hence the name Smashed Crispy Potatoes. There you go. Now we're just gonna do another one for you in case that looked difficult, but it's really not. Don't over smash it, but just a gentle press and you'll get them down like that. And there you go. So I'm gonna do these over and over again until I get these all done and then we'll go fry them up and make them crispy. All right, I've got my pan on a medium high heat, about four or five tablespoons of oil in there and I'm add a little bit of butter. Now I'm adding the butter to the oil. The oil will stabilize this and allow it to get nice and golden brown. Into this, I'm gonna go ahead and light these smashed red potatoes and we're gonna brown them up so they're crispy and delicious. Get those all the way around the edge and don't worry if some of them will break apart or fall apart. We'll, we'll put those in and make them nice and crispy too. It's gonna to be about say about five minutes per side to get them nice and crispy, get that butter all the way around there. We'll brown these up and flip them in about four minutes, five minutes. So it's been about four or five minutes and we'll start turning these baby red potatoes here and they're nice and golden brown. They're gonna be a little bit fragile so you gotta be careful with them. And also notice that most of the oil and butter has been cooked up. So if you wanna add a little bit more oil after you make this turn, that's when you'd wanna do that. But we've got about another four or five minutes to get the other side crispy. 
The last of these smashed red baby potatoes are ready. Let me get these on this nice plate. I've been keeping those warm in the oven and we're gonna do a couple little things to finish them off. Now these are gonna be delicate and fall apart a little bit, but for the most, they're gonna stay together. So now what I've done is I've taken some fresh thyme and perhaps you don't know how to do this. And just in case you don't, here's all you need to do to get the fresh thyme. You take your finger, pinch it there, and just gently slide it across the top like that. Now I've already gone ahead and done a bunch of that. We'll sprinkle the fresh thyme over the top when it's nice and hot because that'll let the uh, herbs essence come out into the potatoes. And I'm gonna lightly season with just a little bit of kosher salt and then some black pepper over the top. And I love to serve potatoes with sour cream. So some smashed red baby potatoes, sour cream on the side. This is a great side dish. It goes with everything. How about some potato leek au gratin potatoes? Let's get cooking with styles. Let's start creating the sauce and steeping the leeks. We're gonna use a little bit of heavy cream here. We're just gonna pour it right in. Nothing special here, nothing tricky to creating this sauce. The ingredients, garlic, thyme, pepper, a little chili, and salt. And then we're gonna take our leeks, which have been cleaned and sliced in half. And we're only using the white part. I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then Turn that down and let it simmer for five minutes. And just in case you don't know what leeks are, this is what they look like. This green up here, we're gonna trim that off a little bit more. Make sure you wash them. We'll split them in half and cut them nice and neat. Let's let that steep. The leeks are nicely steeped and wilted in here. Now it's just a matter of layering. I've gone ahead and pre-buttered my casserole dish and I'm gonna layer down the first row of potatoes. And it's really just this simple, just putting down a good coating down there. And then we'll ladle in some of the leeks here with the cream and spread the leeks around. Give that a nice little dose right there. And then from here, we're gonna put our first layer of Swiss cheese. Now you could use the Gruyere if you'd like, but Swiss is, is just as good. And then another layer of potatoes here. In they go, just like so. And kind of spread them out there. We'll take another layer of the leeks and cream and put that over the top. We're gonna save a little bit to go on the very top because I want that texture of the leeks on the top. And then the cheese, this will be the final layer of the cheese that goes in, at least of the Swiss cheese because we're gonna put Parmesan on at the end. And then in go the potatoes, spread those out nicely. And the last little bit of the prima leeks, put those right over the top, spreading it around. And then we'll cover this with foil and put it in the oven for about 40 minutes. On goes our foil, nice little cover. Pop it in a 400 degree oven. After the potato leeks have been baking for about 40 minutes, put the Parmesan cheese on top and let it cook for another 15 minutes. And that's what you're gonna see, that nice golden brown. Let's plate this up. All right, coming in hot here some beautiful potato leek au gratin potatoes. The thing is about these is they're so good by themselves that you could probably get away just serving this. I mean, if Molly was having dinner, she could eat just the scallop potatoes, but where do you see how bubbly and delicious these look? Look at that steaming hot thing like that. Get this guy out of the way so we can finish it up. A little bit of parsley on top of that, just for color and added texture, oh my goodness. Imagine that with a little sausage on the side or maybe a slice of fish or steak. Man, potato leek au gratin potatoes. That's cooking with styles. We're making buttermilk chive Parmesan crusted mashed potatoes and candied yams with mascarpone cheese and maple syrup and pecans. Let's get cooking with styles. To get this started, peel the potatoes, cube them into one two inch squares, put them in cold water and turn the heat on high. To that I add a bouquet, which is thyme and bay leaves, heavily salted and add the garlic. The yams are put into cold water 
turned on high and heavily salted. Potatoes are done. Let's get this little bouquet out because that's not going to be part of the mashed potatoes. We're going to leave the garlic in there. I'm going to strain these off so we get rid of as much of the water as possible. And make sure none of that garlic comes sneaking out of there because that's going to be part of that mash. See that one right there? I almost tried to get away. All right, I'll put this back on the stove, heat off, lid off to let the moisture evaporate out. Yams are done, but we're gonna make smash, not mash yams. So we're just gonna hit this gently. We're not gonna totally mash these down. We're just gonna break them up a little bit. And then we're gonna move them from this stock pot into a nice little baking dish. And we'll move these in like so. And from here, we're gonna dress these up a little bit, spread them out in that baking dish. And you see how they're still nice and chunky, but there's a little bit of creaminess in there. This will take a little bit of brown sugar and sprinkle that over the top. And then on top of this, now you're saying, okay, here come the marshmallows. No, we're not gonna go with marshmallows. We're gonna go with some mascarpone cheese. This is gonna take a little bit for me to put this on top. So when I'm done, we'll pop this in the oven. Let's get these yams in the oven, but first I'm gonna pull out my roasted carrot, which I have to say looks pretty darn good. In goes the yams. Those will be coming out in just a bit. Everything's ready to go. We took out that little bouquet of bay leaf and thyme, and now we're gonna mash our potatoes. But if you want creamy, smooth potatoes, you need a ricer like this. However, most of us don't have one of these. The only reason I have one is because I make gnocchi. So we're gonna do this based on the fact that most people mash their potatoes with this, a masher. I've got about two tablespoons of butter in there and I'm gonna mash this up really, really creamy. Don't use one of those whippers because what happens when you use one of those automatic whipping machines, it takes the starch and stretches it out and it makes the potatoes gooey like glue. Give me a minute to get everything nice and smooth. Potatoes are mashed, now it's time to put the finishing touches on. I've got my freshly chopped chives, those will go in there, and our buttermilk. Now, make sure you shake this up before you put it in. And start off with just a little because you can always add more, but you can't take it out. We don't want these too creamy. Once we get this mixed in, and you can see the potatoes were really nice and fresh, so there was already a nice creaminess to it. The buttermilk's gonna add a little bit of a tang to this, and then what I want you to do at this point is take your finger and take a little taste out and say a little more salt, a little more pepper. For me, because I heavily salted my water, I don't need to salt this anymore. So, so from here, I'm gonna put our potatoes into our baking dish and make sure you have a hot pad in case it's hot. And we're just gonna go ahead and put those right in our baking dish. And this is hot, so give me just a second to work with it. And we're gonna take this, spread it out in our baking dish. And we're gonna want these little peaks and valleys because what that's gonna do is that's gonna give a place for the Parmesan cheese to stick to. So when we put it under the broiler, it's gonna get nice and crusty and brown. It should be really good. In the oven this goes for just a few minutes. So for the last few minutes, what I want you to do is go ahead and throw your broiler on. That's gonna brown up the top there. But the trick here is don't take your eye off of this because you don't wanna ruin all the work you've put into this. So the broiler has been on for about four or five minutes. Everything's looking good. There are the mashed potatoes and here are the candied yams. These are super hot, so make sure you have hot pads. So, we didn't deviate from tradition. We have mashed potatoes, but buttermilk mashed potatoes with a Parmesan glaze and chives, and then candied yams. But what we did that's a little bit different, check this out, the pecans with maple syrup. You drizzle that over the top and serve that up. We're talking cooking with styles elevated for the holidays. Incredibly delicious Polish potato pancake recipe. This is from my grandmother who came over to the United States in the early 1900s. It's simple, easy, and it is delicious. The beauty of this recipe is it's really simple. Basic ingredients, onions, potatoes, 
eggs, flour, and salt. And of course, the oil to cook it in. So let's get started. We're gonna dice up our onion here. We're gonna use a half an onion for about two pounds of potatoes. We're gonna go with a, a medium to fine chop on this. Now, this is totally up to you. You can peel your potatoes or you can leave the skin on. I leave the skin on because remember, this is coming from a sharecropper who's using all the food they can get. Scrub the skin really good like you were gonna bake it and then grate the potato so you're getting nice, long strands of potatoes. You can see that these strands are nice and long, and that's what's gonna hold the potato pancake together, because we wanna get as much of the water out of this as possible. There's our potatoes, ready to go. All right, we've got our onions. We're gonna take our potatoes and drop those in. All right, so it's really simple. One egg, a healthy pinch of salt, a quarter cup of pancake batter, and pepper. And we're gonna go ahead and give that a mix. It's gonna look like it's not going to liquefy, it's not going to bond, but trust me, it will. And these are gonna go as an accent, but they'll actually add a little bit of flavor so it'll look good and it's gonna taste super good. We're gonna put in about a quarter of an inch in the bottom of the skillet. So now we're ready to throw these in the hot oil. There you go, you see how that just sizzles when it goes in? If you want bigger ones, make bigger ones. If you want smaller ones, make smaller ones. And you can already see how those are getting nice and golden brown there. You go ahead and turn them. Just be careful, that oil is mighty hot. All right, we're ready to pull these off. I put them on a little paper towel just to give them a way to strain off that oil that we've been cooking in. All right, let's plate these up. Like so, we're gonna take a dollop of sour cream, put it right in the center, and then we're gonna take those green onions, sprinkle them over the top. There you go, there is some Polish potato pancakes. I don't know about you, but that looks damn good. Homemade gnocchi, it couldn't be easier. The kids will love it, you'll love it. Let's get cooking with style. Gnocchi, it couldn't be simpler, but this is the way we usually get it in a package at the store. And this is good, I like it, but if you wanna make something a little special, gnocchi is a great way to go to involve the kids. So let's get started here with what we're doing. Take a little bit of flour, about a cup, and then we're gonna use a potato ricer. If you don't have one of these, you can just mash the potatoes, but don't over mash it. It makes the potatoes really fluffy and light. Now watch at the bottom here when it comes out. That is why our gnocchi will be a beautiful little dumpling, a potato type dumpling. And we'll use about four potatoes here. I'm gonna put a pinch of salt in there and then we're gonna mix the ingredients together to incorporate the flour with the potatoes. And what we're making here, this is not pasta, it's a dumpling, it's a potato dumpling. Now, in goes the egg. One egg, I pre-whip them and what we're doing is we're making a little bit of a dough here. And it'll seem dry at first, but it'll all start to come together. And then you take your hands, get your hands down in there. See how that's all coming together now? Now this is a little wet. Maybe we had a little more water in our potatoes than we normally would. So we'll just add a little more flour. So I like to let this rest for about 15 minutes because we're stretching that flour and it's giving it more of a, a rubbery texture. So if we let it rest for about 15 minutes, this will be much better. We're gonna take a little bit of flour, put it on our board. We pulled off a, a little section of this and now we're gonna roll this. This is where the kids love it. Okay, so you just roll like you're rolling, kind of a rolling pin, but you're using your fingertips to stretch this out. A little more flour there. And you want this about, say about three quarters of an inch in diameter. And now you're just gonna do this, and you cut off little sections. After you have it this way, I don't know if you'll ever be able to eat uh, gnocchi store-bought. Take a little bit of flour, dip the tip of your fork in there, and take the tines and just press there like that. So there you go. All right, we're just gonna make a portion for one. I've got my heavily salted water here. I'm gonna just drop the gnocchi in like this. I kid you not, these things cook super, super quick, so don't let them sit in there too long because if you do, they'll turn into mush. Give a gentle stir here. You gotta pay attention here. They cook quick. So they've been simmering about 
two minutes and they're starting to come to the top. Let's start pulling these out and I've got a beautiful little pesto here. We made this uh, pesto sauce, I don't know, maybe about four or five months ago, but it is a perfect little a combination with this gnocchi. All right, let's go plate this up. All right, we're gonna give a little toss to this gnocchi with that pesto sauce. Doesn't that look good? Now we'll top this off with a little grated Parmigiano, the obligatory piece of parsley there. And I'm a big pepper guy, so I always hit this with a little bit of pepper. If you wanted to go, say, some crushed red pepper, you could do that. So there are your homemade gnocchi. The kids will love this. I love it, and I know you're going to love it. Anymore.